All right, well, we turn our attention from lifespan now to uh, sensation and perception. And the way most of these modules work is that we talk about the basic principles up front and then we break it apart into component parts as, as we move along. That's true with sensation and perception, and there are a few terms that we actually need to uh, start out with. So uh, basic principles is where we're going to start. Uh, the very first one that I want to make sure that we got we have clear is <clears throat> uh, in terms of terms and understanding <clears throat> excuse me is uh, the actual word sensation now when you hear this uh, a lot of times we confuse our terms but obviously this is uh, rooted in in our senses um, and when you uh, talk about senses, the five senses, they are the, the input, uh, thinking in terms of a computer, they are the input devices that get the information to the brain itself, which makes sense then that um, sensation is uh, the, the process uh, by which um, our sensory receptors and nervous system receive and represent stimulus energies from our environment. So it's the process by which we receive stimulation. We receive stimulation. So needless to say, um, when you are tasting something, uh, your tongue has to, the taste buds on your tongue, have to translate what they're getting, what, what it's uh, being stimulated by, into something. And sensation is just that. Uh, it receives uh, the information coming from the environment and uh, represents it and sends that signal down through the nervous system and from the, from the sensory receptors down to the nervous system. Now, the, the second one, which is uh, the other basic uh, component, is perception. And a lot of times we think they're the same thing. And, and in reality, uh, sensation is uh, stimulation. It's, it's processing stimulation. Perception, uh, one way to look at it is it's interpretation. <clears throat> Oops. Um, and so essentially, it takes the data <coughs> that is coming from the, the senses uh, and it processes and organizes uh, the data and interprets it into meaningful uh, uh, stimulation, meaningful uh, data that the, the brain can actually uh, use. So, uh, so it processes and organizes. So if you remember, we talked a little bit about uh, schemas, even when we were talking about um, uh, Jean Piaget and kids and their developing schemata, which is, uh, sometimes that's often a schemata is a singular, schema is uh, plural. So it processes and organizes it into meaningful information, uh, so when you look at a table uh, and you're, uh, you're paying attention to the, uh, the legs of that table, um, you are processing, even, even when you're watching me draw this square, you're processing the light that comes in, the shading because there's a dark background, the lightness of the cursor that I'm using, you process all of that. Then you make sense of it, which is what perception is. You interpret that into, oh yeah, that, I've seen that before, that's a rectangle. And that's perception and sensation. Um, when you look at a picture like this, uh, what you see happening when you look at it is initially, probably what you see is a rose. But the longer you look at it, and perhaps the question is asked, 
what's going on here, and the longer you process the the picture, you begin to see uh, uh, a lady's shoes, you see her stockings, uh, and suddenly you begin to think, well, maybe there is something else going on here. So you start searching. And before long, you will notice these, this couple in the middle of the flower when initially it looked like just the interior of a flower. That's exactly what happens with sensation. Sensation, you're just taking in everything. It's so automatic that we don't even pay attention to it. You, you look, somebody gives you a picture like this and says, what is this? And you say, it's a flower. So what the, you produce is what your perception is telling you. Uh, sensation, we don't pay much attention to until, of course, we are affected by it somehow. If, for example, you go into the eye doctor's office and they dilate your pupils, suddenly your sensation is off and you can't make things out or bright light impacts you, etc. And those are good examples of <coughs> a disruption in sensation. Now, two other key concepts, really quite key, because particularly when we get uh, when we go through this, the big question is the difference between uh, top-down and bottom-up processing. Uh, and let me start just with uh, uh, bottom-up processing. It, when we talk about bottom-up processing, it it uh, it is very much connected to sensation because it is based in. The, the analysis that begins with the sense receptors and works up, so bottom up, uh, to the brain's integration of sensory information. So it, this starts in the senses and, and, um, and works up to the brain. So when we talk about bottom up processing, we're actually talking about uh, what happens at the sensory level. Um, it starts in senses, uh, works up uh, to brain. And so, like I said, essentially when we talk about bottom-up processing, we're talking about what is happening at the senses. The second one is top-down processing. And top-down processing, essentially, as you can probably guess given the definition of bottom-up, starts in the brain uh, with concepts and other learning, essentially, and uh, starts in the brain, uses experience uh, and other learning to uh, perceive and organize the data coming uh, at us. Um, so experience expectations, uh, learning, uh, are all part of <clears throat> bottom or top down processing. When you think about it, these two, bottom up and top down, work in tandem. Uh, we gain things from sensory uh, stimulation and it's working its way up to the brain, but also top-down is working as well, and it's processing that data from a conceptual standpoint. And that, that's really, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, the key to top-down processing, is, is about conceptual in info. In other words, categorical information, and that, that's part of why we process things so very quickly is we're not only receiving information from the senses and what we get there, but it also is uh, processing it from a conceptual standpoint, and those two work together to create quite a, a speedy pair of principles of processing that actually um, allow us to adapt very quickly and to learn very quickly.